Good evening, everyone. Um, hope you all are having a wonderful day. The Bible says that we should not, and any of us should ever think more highly of ourselves than, than we ought to. Uh, the issue is here is uh, there's a person who on uh, YouTube, of course, is not the only person who views himself a little highly, uh, a little more higher than he ought to. Uh, it's not even uh, a debatable issue. As a matter of fact, he kind of advocates that. He doesn't say it quite the same way, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Someone asked me if I would uh, talk about this person, Kevin Samuels. Well, when, the, when they first said that, I had no idea who he was. Never heard of him. Uh, I'm thinking, was he somebody? Was he an entertainer? Was he a preacher? Didn't know who he was. And so I didn't really think too much about him. And, and, and someone else even asked me uh, what I think about him saying so-and-so. And I said, I, I, I couldn't comment because I don't know anything about him. I couldn't. It, it would be unfair for me to say so. Then uh, some more people asked me. A matter of fact, someone even sent me something about him. And I said, OK, fine, I'll go ahead and look him up. And I even thought that it was maybe a buddy of mine who they said, no, I don't know this guy. I, I never heard of this guy. And what was interesting was the opinion that each one of them gave about this man. And so I want to talk about him, but really also how it pertains to us as, as believers. And so this really isn't solely about uh, this man, Kevin Samuels. It's about his audience and what potential harm he could be doing to, to believers. Now, obviously you can tell by the thumbnail that I do not believe that any Christian, be it a Christian male or a Christian female, ought to be listening to him. If you are in the world, if you're not a believer, if, if Christ is not who you want to uh, serve, if he's not your Lord, then fine. Live how you want to live. Listen who you want to listen to uh, and be careful of nothing. That would be my take on it. But for those who are named uh, at the name of Jesus, if that's who your Lord is, well, then those are the, those are the ones who I'm talking to. Now, when I looked at him and actually I looked at several videos before I even went to his, before I went to his channel. His channel is, is a large channel. I think it's like 1.2 million subscribers. And so he's well known and, and he's been interviewed by different people. He is some sort of, I guess, a relationship expert or, or guru or dating expert. How that is, I guess anyone can, can call themselves that. I mean, I can call myself that. And then someone who is looking for a better relationship is going to look up and find find me out and hear what I have to say, because let's just be honest, people are desperate, especially those who have been hurt, who have, uh, who find themselves single, uh, involuntarily, who would like to be married or those who are just struggling with relationships or want to find the right mate, the right spouse. And so what do you do? You turn to whoever you can find, just like anyone who wants to lose weight. There's only one, there's, there's really only one secret to losing weight, uh, but we're going to turn to every sort of miracle, every sort of new, uh, diet or fad same thing with this. And so I don't begrudge anybody for wanting to listen to him uh, if they are not a believer. That being said, um, a lot of and a lot of what he says actually is true. You're not going to have someone that's going to accumulate a, a good following if they don't have anything true to say. I mean, the Bible says that even Satan, I'm not, and I'm not calling him Satan. So don't don't. I'm just using this as an example. But the Bible says that even Satan even uh, he would appear as an angel of light. And so you have got to, if you want to have a sinister or an ungodly motive behind you, you can't really appear that way. And so a lot of what he says is actually true. Uh, it's good. Uh, I'm questioning his motives. I'm questioning something about him that I see that other guys have, have seen as well. And then what direction, the harm that it might do as far as uh, a non-believer, especially someone who, who's really uh, impressionable. He said, like I said, he's, he says a lot of good things in terms of relationship. And really these things are really just kind of, kind of obvious. Some of you don't know who he is and, and I'm not saying even go look him up. Some of you do. Like I said, I've, I've been under a rock. And so a lot of these people who I hear about, I don't know much about them. And so I try to kind of do a little research and, and, and look up and see what he's got going on. <laughs> it was, it was really interesting. He is, he's the kind of person he, as I said, he thinks more highly of himself than he ought to. He really does. And of course, Paul says we ought not do that. And so uh, he's got a good thing going. I mean, let's just be clear. He's got a good thing going uh, in that he tells uh, 
<clears throat> lesser men how to be like him. And I said lesser men, that's not how I see you or anyone else, but that's how he sees you. He sees other people as lesser men and as lesser women. He's the guy who said that he thinks that um, out of a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, what kind of a man he is, he's a nine. I mean, you, we're going to hear this in a second. Um, he has this, this term and he says he didn't coin the phrase and I guess he didn't, but he's given it his own little definition of what a high value man is. We're going to talk about that. And some of the things that he's advocating for, even says that we ought to advocate for ourselves, just raise a lot of red flags. And so when he says that he's a nine out of a 10, it makes you wonder, what does he think about everyone else? And so one of the little clips that he says, I, I, I thought it was just funny. And so I just want you to hear this. I sit down and consult with a group of women. One of the first things I do is I ask everybody, ask everyone to rank themselves on a scale of one to 10. And you cannot use seven. There is no seven. It's either one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, or 10. And you know what the majority of women rank themselves as? Probably eight. eight or, yes. Yeah. Eight. And they, and you know what the majority of the women are? Six. Five, the average is a six, and that's being professionally nice. Women look at themselves and see and will rank themselves higher than they actually rank themselves. Ask men the same question. Men rank themselves to about around five, five and a half if I actually aggregated. Men look at themselves and see their problem areas. Women look at themselves and see what they want to see. So well, where would you rank yourself, Kevin? I rank myself a nine. Okay. So to him, and, and I'll, I'll show you why this is, of any sort of biblical importance to the body. But to him, most men, and he says they rank themselves properly in the realm of a five, maybe sometimes a six, but a five. And they do that honestly. And that's kind of where they should be. And then for women, most women exaggerate who they are and will rank themselves as an eight, but really they are five, sometimes at best six. And he is even, I guess someone is talking about how he told some woman, and I guess it went viral where he said, uh, at best your average, and so you kind of see this whole little thing about him. And so red flags kind of go off even when I when I when I see this and how he just thinks that the average woman is a five. Well, the first question that, that that's just begging to be answered or asked is. What about your daughter? You think she's a five also? I, I hope you wouldn't tell her that. But why would you tell any woman that? Well, let's just be clear. This is an example of an insecure man. Truth be told, all of us are insecure. All of us. It's just to what degree we're insecure and how we overcome it or even how we try to mask it. Uh, if you can accept the fact that you are insecure, that there's some things wrong about you and you're okay with that, well, then you'll live a, a productive life. You'll live a happy life, uh, mentally healthy life. But if you just don't, if you can't get by it and the way that you overcompensate or compensate one of the two for your insecurities is to put people down and lift yourself up, which is what he does, then we got a problem. And the problem really comes in is when you are trying to speak to people about how to be this high value man or high value woman or this person of worth. And one of the things someone is going to say eventually, because he's got a lot of fans who they're going to uh, want to excoriate me. They're going to want to excoriate me. They're going to want to say all sorts of things about me. I'm jealous. I'm a hater. Again, I don't know this guy. I, I never met the person. Just found out about him. So I'm not jealous. Could care less about him. And when you, when I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about my past, and you'll find out I'm in no way, shape, or fashion jealous of this person. But <clears throat> someone is going to ask, well, why did you put that picture of him up? Why did you put the picture of him? I with, sit down and consult with a group of women. One of the first things I do is I ask. Why would you put the picture of him, you know, the way he looks? Um, well, I didn't come up with these pictures. These are, these are his pictures. These are pictures that Kevin took of himself. These are selfies. And he took the pictures. He posted the pictures. And not only that, he's, that's how he is. He's proud of those pictures. Well, my issue is this personally, and you all have heard me say this before. I even talked about how men are today. A lot of weak men. As a matter of fact, uh, Paul Washer, I think he said either he said or his wife said it about how if there was a, a man eating lion, lion on the loose, 
uh, he would soon die of starvation because there weren't very many men for him to eat. And his point was that men are not the same. We are not the same the way people in this generation or earlier generations, our fathers, our grandfathers and so forth. We are so consumed, many of them are so consumed with how they look, how they appear to people. Ladies, let me just say this. If your man has more fragrances in the bathroom than you, we got a problem. If he's more consumed about his hair than your hair, uh, than you are about your hair, we got a problem. If he's more consumed about his appearance and his dress, uh, then we got a problem. And somebody said, well, Corey, obviously you're not consumed about, you know, consumed about your hair because well, you don't have any. But a man should want to be groomed right. That's not what I'm saying. But if there's this overemphasis, this overemphasization of this person wanting to look nice. The question is, look nice to who? Who is it that you are trying to impress? And what is it about yourself that feels that you are really inadequate? Again, I said, we all have some insecurities, but his just seemed to kind of just, just jump off the chart. And with his, I when you go to YouTube, you'll find that there are people who have questioned his his sexuality. He, he made a statement uh, about men uh, with other men and he didn't really kind of backtrack at least that I've heard again I'm not a follower so I don't know all that he's ever said but I want I want to play this this also um, makes some flags and red flags go off that's all I'm saying we need to start advocating yeah. for men who want to be with men I understand the impulse brothers I do but our women are not showing us I don't care what they say what are the women showing Well, I don't know how you can, a man would even have that come out of his mouth, start advocating for men being with other men. I don't care what relationship you've ever been in. I don't care what it is, but to say, hey, listen, we need to promote and advocate and embrace other men being with other men. No, 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 no. Sorry, Kevin. Um, but you know what? I get it. It's the world. You're speaking to the world. I hope that is. But if you're a Christian, you have no business listening to this person. I want to share something with you guys. And I want to talk about really, and I have, again, I have a problem with his dress. That's bothersome to me. Um, men ought to dress in a way that is appropriate, right? And there's a couple of passages in the Bible that we don't pay attention to that is really also focusing on dress and the way a man behaves, how he carries himself. And so, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and go to the Bible and let's look up, look up a couple of things. One, uh, where is it at? <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians 6, let me make the uh, the uh, text a little bit bigger. Um, he makes a statement in, in verse 9, uh, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Not Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. Um, this word that's used here uh, is used as the, in some versions, it may say the effeminate, but the word is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, malakoi, and the word means someone who is soft. So for a man to be soft, that's not what God is after. Now it's God after for somebody who's just hard all over. He just this guy, he just just rough and tough and, and has no sensitivity. No, but the way you carry yourself. And you all know what I, what we mean by when we say a man is effeminate. And nowadays, uh, there's this term called toxic masculinity where really being a man is not not looked upon too, too fondly by certain people. But the truth of the matter is, and you just ask any real woman, um, she doesn't mind a man being masculine. As a matter of fact, that's what she wants. She wants a man who is a man. The problem is the lines have become blurred between men and women nowadays. And so there's a, what's this Old Spice? I think it's an Old Spice commercial where uh, the guy and the gal, they are, she wants to, to, to use his, 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 I don't know, his lotion or his, or his soap or whatever it was. And so he's talking about how he, he just wants to have his own. And it's kind of a little, a little feminine take on, on men, but that's not what God wants. God is not after us being soft in any way. As a matter of fact, Look at something that Jesus said and tell me if you notice this up front. Uh, in Matthew, Jesus is, let me go there. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong button. 
in Matthew, Jesus, let me make the, make the font a little bit bigger so you all can see. Uh, Jesus in Matthew 11, chapter verse 7, is talking about John. He says, as these men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. John this is John the Baptist. What did you see? What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed um, by the wind, a reed shaken by the wind. Verse 8, but what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing. Those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. Now, I'm looking at the NASB. Some of your versions might not say soft clothing, might say fine clothing. But I want to highlight this because the same word that's used here for soft clothing, look, I'll highlight it, look down at the bottom, is the same word malakos, or in this word, in this word, uh, malakaka, which is the same thing, soft. It is where we also derive this homosexual feelings from this softness uh, of a man. And so God is not after that at all. I'm saying that in relation to the pictures that he's taking. Again, let's go back and look at these. Are, again, these are his pictures and there's more. I, I, I'm not going to spend all, a, lot, a lot of time on, on his wardrobe, but these are him. The, the, these are his pictures that he posted and took that he thought that, that we all should see this, that we should be proud of this. And this is just not to me. I, I, get, it, I get it. It's 2021, uh, soon to be 2022. First of all, if you catch me wearing this, um, we got a problem. My wife is not going to be too happy with that as well. And so you see these 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 pictures, and uh, I'll be honest with you, um, that's not my my biggest concern, but it does raise a red flag. And so if you got a man who is saying that he is advocating for men, we should be advocating for men being with men, um, then we got a problem. Now I can say this, and it's been asked. I don't know. Um, and so I don't know if he's gay or not, but what I do know is he's not godly. That behavior, not just his clothes and his appearance, but this arrogant, haughty attitude where he is, he is all of that. He's a high valued man and other men should ascribe to be that because what you're going to find out about him is that he didn't speak a whole lot about the internal things. He speaks about the external things and he talks about how, what a high valued man is. He's given his definitions. I don't have them all written down, but I know one, he talked about how uh, a high valued man is a man uh, of worth to someone. And he makes about, he said it was kind of odd, $10,000 a year in Atlanta dollars. I guess that's where he's in Atlanta. So you adjust that if you were in New York or California or Texas or, or, or Tennessee or wherever. And so I thought that was kind of odd because, so you have to make $10,000 a year to be a high valued man. The question is value to who? Who is looking for that kind of man? Because I know some women who are perfectly happy with their man, who though he doesn't make a hundred thousand a year, maybe he makes fifty thousand, maybe he makes sixty thousand, but he loves her, he takes care of her. The first thing that you say that even remotely looks like you are insulting her, you got a fist to the mouth, right? Whereas some of these so-called high-value men, you may you may insult their, their women, they may look at her and, and and wonder, hey, what you gonna do about that? The man just called you a name. So I don't think a woman is necessary after some are after. Uh, high high income. Uh, I don't think that's what uh, at least a real woman is. What they really want is security, and it may not necessarily be financial security. I know a lot of women who are perfectly happy with a man who doesn't make a lot of money. And I always think back. I don't know why I do, um, but you know, growing up in the seventies, I always think about uh, good times and, and James Evans. And he was poor, but sure. But listen, Florida loved him. Women are going to love the man who loves her, and so this guy. Um, is portraying a picture that is completely ungodly. It's unhealthy. It is unbiblical. And so my question then is, and, and he's mentioned about different churches and Christian women and so forth and made me wonder, is he a believer? Well, he made a statement about talking to someone about um, Adam and Eve being married because he asked her, was Adam and Eve married? And she said, yes. And, and he and he was just being flippant and silly and and condescending and say well who performed the who performed the wedding ceremony simba well we'll let we'll let you ask god that question when you meet him because listen and i don't know if he's ever watched gonna watch it. he probably won't he's got too many you know too much to do bigger fish to fry than worrying about somebody like me but uh, if he does or anyone else uh, you're going to meet god at some point in time ain't no if ands buts about it and i can promise you this the selfies that you're taking, the clothes that you're wearing, that ain't going with you. You are going to meet God naked as you can be, bare before the Lord, and ask him who performed the ceremony. Ask him, uh, was Adam and Eve married? As a matter of fact, let's go look for ourselves and we'll see. 
let's uh let's see let's click over on this and i just pulled up a couple passages that have that talk about adam and eve being married genesis 2 24 for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife his wife and they should become one flesh and the man and his wife were both naked <clears throat> uh chapter 3 verse 6 they heard the sound of the lord god walking in the garden uh, in the cool of the day and the man and his wife uh, chapter three, verse 17, because you have listened to the voice of your wife. And so I don't want to, um, harp on the fact that he's not a Christian giving advice, but when you're making fun or making light of, uh, Christian views, well then now we got a problem. Now I'm, I, I want to see, you. I want to talk to you a little bit. And he's one of these guys who tries to, clearly he's trying to impress people and people who like that, they are impressed. So he has, I guess he's a life coach. Uh, and listen, <laughs> if you are looking for a life coach, what you really need to be looking for is Jesus. And you need to be looking for him desperately. The only person that can tell you how to be a better person, a better woman or a better man is God. We've got these biblical principles that are laid out. And if you want to have an example of someone in today who fits that bill, who looks that way, well, then find a biblically based or sound man or woman. There are plenty of them out there. And guess what? They don't necessarily fit the, the criteria that he has laid out as a high value man or woman. That's not him. Uh, him talking about shacking up and hooking up and so forth. Let him do that. Um, God is going to deal with him. Um, this Because let me, let me tell you what, what a high value, what a real man is like and what he's not like. See, a godly man isn't, isn't all only concerned about what others see or think about him. No, that's what a child does. A godly man is not interested in how much money he makes. Um, he's really concerned about really the worth of his family. That's what a high value man, a man of worth is. Because let me just be honest with you. I'm going to say something that's going to be striking and cutting, but I want you to hear this. And if anyone can get this message to him, please do. But here's the truth. Kevin Samuels, on your best day, you are some trash. Is that kind of rough? Well, I say that because it's the truth for all of us. On our best day, we are some trash. Our righteousness is less or is worth less than filthy rags next to God. And so to try to make yourself out to be somebody and tell everyone else to be that way. Well, first of all, it's a scam. Here's why I say it's a scam, because you're getting people to, com to uh, contribute to your cause uh, and you being a high value man. And so they're contributing to you. They're listening to you. And so you perpetuate this little thing and keep yourself lifted up as a high value man. Meanwhile, all you little chumps, all you little peasants, uh, send me your money, cash at me, this and that or whatever, support me, listen to me. Uh, and so that way I can continue to be a high value man. Well, let me just say this. I haven't said everything about my past uh, <clears throat> for good reason, because it's not all that important. But in the past, I owned and operated an investment firm. I was a I was a managing principal of an investment firm with, with a couple offices and a lot of different people working for me. And in terms of what looked like a high value man, I would probably qualify as that on, you know, because really what he's talking about, he's not really talking about a real man. He's really talking about a resume, someone who looks good on paper. And so on paper, and I think someone said that his net worth is around three million. Well, in those days when things were going well for me, Kevin, I just pulled out a card. I would have bought you and your net worth. I'm just being honest. Would I have considered myself to be a high value man looking back? No. Um, the, the the cost of the suits that I had or what I could buy. I think that for a lot of people looking on the outside, on the outside looking in, it would have looked impressive. But spiritually, in a godly sense, not at all. Not at all. And so um, I was put in time out, so to speak. Things I found myself in in sin. And so I could not maintain this this high value sort of lifestyle. What I found out, though, Kevin, was this and anyone else, what my wife and what my children wanted more than anything else wasn't the dollars, wasn't what I could what I could provide for them in terms of monetarily. Now, don't get me wrong. My wife wants to be able to hit the light switch and the lights come on. She wants to be able to turn on the water and water flows through. We want that. But at the same time, what she really wanted more than anything else was just me here. Was my kids be there. And so here you've got a guy who was teaching folks about how to be or how to have these these high value, so to speak, relationships when you're not a master at it. And so he, he'll he say, well, yeah, but uh, but when people listen to me, they end up hooking up and so forth. And he, I think he even did a video where he was talking about that. Well, listen, 
you create an atmosphere in a place in the space on, I think it said Facebook, where people can get together and meet up. Well, the clubs do that every day, right? You can go to you can go to a church and do that. Businesses, when people work together, they meet up. And so you haven't done anything special, but you have portrayed or given the wrong view, the wrong image of what a high value man is. See, a high value man loves the Lord. A high value man, let's be honest, is known by the Lord. A high value man is a man who God finds value in. He can use that man in his home, in his community, and in the world. He may not make $10,000, but that's fine. That's fine. You make all the riches that you want to, and then let's just see how, how happy you are. Because when I look at you, I can tell. I can see the insecurity coming in. I saw an interview that, that Kevin did where uh, in this interview, they were asking him about his sexuality. Normally, he controls the atmosphere. He controls the conversations uh, in his little dialogue that he's doing uh, from, his, from his channel. Well, when he does that, He's in control. He's he, he he controls the narrative. But in this one, you start seeing some things. And, and one of the things that we used to teach people uh, at our office, when a new broker, a new financial advisor came over, we would talk to them about how you sell to people and how you talk to people, uh, how you communicate to them, convey to them that they ought to buy this stock, this bond, this financial planning, uh, this wealth planning that we're offering. Well, what happens is this, when the person is nervous, they start doing some things. They start inserting phrases to search for or find time to say what they want to say. And they'll say things like, 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 or, you know, you know, you know. Now, every now and then that's fine. But when you keep finding these little verbal placeholders like that, it's because they're nervous and they're trying to figure things out. Well, he's being asked these questions. And so his insecurity shows up because he's not in control anymore. A person who, like him, he has his personality style called expressive. And expressive people, they want one thing. Their main need is attention. And so Kevin Samuels needs attention. He's not going to shy away from it. He's going to want it. And he even talks about how you need to stand out. Well, no, we don't want to do that. You ought not think more highly of yourself. You ought to, you not. You don't want people to think more highly of yourself the way you want them to. You don't want folks looking at you like you are the man. Because what's going to happen, Kevin, is one day you're not going to have the clientele or folks wanting to look at you as though you are something and you're going to come face to face with all the words that you've ever said with all the things that you've said mean to other women or to men to put them in their place and, and, and granted you have said some true things you really have but if anybody wants to find that person to follow and to emulate you could not be a, a, a christian or maybe you are and you're just misguided because if you are a believer and that's the image that you're looking for, then you need to question your heart. And so maybe he does have some good intent. I think best case scenario, best case scenario, excuse me, um, is that he wants, <clears throat> he wants all the world and all that comes with it and wants to show you how to do the same thing. Or worst case scenario, and this is what I think, is that um, he wants all that for himself and he wants to use others to get there. That's probably what it is. Because people who think highly of themselves aren't usually in the benefit of wanting to help others. Because who's the greatest example of someone who has a, a me um, problem, an I problem? It's all about me. It's all about I. Y'all know Satan. Most people like that, they're selfish. And so they don't have time to think about you little chipmunks, right? Uh, he's out there trying to get it, get, his, get his own nuts. And so he don't have any problem. He don't have any time with, with mess with you other chipmunks, right? Uh, so he is someone who is clearly to be avoided. Now, if you find yourself looking to somebody like that because you're impressed with either his clothes, his his style, uh, with his, with his I don't know if you're impressed with his money or not. Uh, if you're impressed with his cars, the way he does things, so be it. Hey, listen, uh, if that's what... Um, if that's what floats your boat, um, have at it. Um, knock your socks off by listening to him. But you're going to find out that you won't get very far. I can promise you that. You, you've got men out there, and, and, and I kind of talk myself into doing this, uh, who are not just catering to one particular set uh, of society, but men who are intentionally or unintentionally being used by Satan to portray what it means to be a man or what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a uh, productive citizen in this in this country, right? You've got the Kevin Samuels of the world who wants to do so by style and by appearances. Uh, and what did Jesus say about men who 
um, look good on the outside. They're like uh, whitewashed tombs. They look nice on the outside, but on the inside, what are they full of? Dead men's bones. So we see that with this brother because clearly something is going on on the inside. And so when you've got a person who <clears throat> looks down on other people, some say it openly, some kind of to themselves, but it's the way they, they speak. And so it's even causing it to take a second look at, at do I want to do this deal even with, uh, uh, with this other guy, Joe Rogan, and people of the like who look down on Christianity and they may take their philosophy or their, uh, their ideas and say that all of us are wrong. The world wants you to believe that you are wrong, that the way you should be as a man, a godly man is wrong, the way that you should be as a godly woman, that's wrong. The way you should look at the Bible, that's wrong. The way you should even, even think about it, is there even a, a Jesus in heaven? Is there a God? That's wrong. The world wants to change the way you think. They want to change the way you, way you think bit by bit, little by little, from the way that you dress, from um, how you spend, what you watch, what, you, what and who you listen to. And so that is the, the goal of, <clears throat> excuse me, of the world. So let me say this, and this is the, be the better point. Uh, the issue is, what is a real man? The issue is, what is a high value man? Well, that starts and ends with Jesus. Because if you don't know him, you don't know anything. He talks about being or someone being average uh, and telling women, known for telling women that on your best day, you're average. Well, OK, fine. Uh, I think since most of the world, most of the world is against Christianity. Most of the world is not, they're not believers. Well, then that means the, the average person on the planet is a non-Christian. So if you want to be above average, well then what do you do? You'd be a Christian. You don't become a Christian because you want to use that as some sort of criteria, something to hold above someone's head. But if you want to be above average, you want to follow Christ, right? And so I don't know if I would consider myself a high value man, that'd be up someone else to decide mainly my wife and my children. And if anyone else thinks differently, that's fine. You are you are more than welcome to think that uh, I'm a low value person. Now, I will say this. I had been offered a few times by some people to come and, and consult with them or to consult for them to help them build their investment firm. And I'm talking about to the tune to where I would make millions. I hadn't even told my wife about this because it's a non-starter for me. I'm out of that lifestyle. And if that means that I only make this much money when I can make that much money, that's fine. Could I go out and make legitimately millions upon millions of dollars advising folks and, and consulting investment firms? I could. No problem. Could I help them grow? I could. No problem. But is that what God has for me to do? It's not. And so what I think a high value man is, is a person who is doing what God wants him to do, not what you want you to do. Because your value is derived by God, not by what someone else says. And if that means that all you can drive is a Ford and not a, and not a Phantom, amen, amen. The Bible says that David rested when his purpose was fulfilled. And so when I rest, when I die, I want to be able to know that my purpose was fulfilled, that I did what God placed me here to do principally with my family, with my wife and children. That's where my greatest value is, right? And so if you are a woman, if you are a man, if you're single, and I've been getting these, these requests, and so we're going to do it about how to live as a single man or a single woman, and even how, how you, because everyone, let's be honest, if you're single, you probably still want to be with someone. And so we'll, we'll cover that. We'll, we'll deal with that. And we'll do so in a godly fashion. I'll let you know when it's going to happen. Uh, and we'll do so to where we'll take take phone calls, not phone calls. We'll have folks online to, to kind of come on board and we'll sit and talk and we'll chit chat and we'll just go over the scriptures of how to be a single man or single woman and how to find you um, a wife or a husband, the biblical way, without having to make $10,000 a month, uh, without having to be well connected, without having to hang around other people that you think are high value people, without other so-called high value people promoting you. I knew um, very wealthy people, obviously in my in my line of work as a uh, in, as an investment banking and financial advising, who had millions of dollars, and they weren't most of the million, millionaires that I that I dealt with. They didn't even let folks know that they had money. But, and I don't know, maybe it's a cultural thing where nowadays some folks, when they have money, they want to flaunt it, which means you're probably not going to have that much money 
going forward because you got to continue this charade. You got to keep this face going. So, because man, did you hear what happened to Kevin? Yeah, man, he had to he had to sell that house. He had to this and that. And and so the danger is when you're so worried about that, you got to do any and everything to keep that. And he mentioned how um, high net worth people, the divorce rate is lower than it is with people of lower net worth. Well, that's true. But guess what's higher in the high net worth community? The level of infidelity. If you think infidelity is bad uh, amongst us regular people, well, it's even higher amongst the high net worth people. Why? Because they're staying married in many cases just for the finances. It's an economic, it's a, it's a choice of economics. And so they're not very happy because what is the suicide rate amongst the wealthy? It's higher than the average of uh, uh, low income people. Now, isn't that funny? Because money doesn't buy you happiness. You can have a big house and not want to go home. You can have this large bed and not want to sleep in it, right? You, 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 you've heard the different analogies. And so what Kevin Samuels is portraying to the world, again, this is not for people of the world. This is for people who are of God. And this will only make sense to you all. To someone who is a Kevin Samuels devotee, someone who is a follower of his, not going to like what I'm saying. You're going to want to be bothered by what I'm saying. You're going to want to uh, cut off what I'm saying, call me names. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I'm high value enough to not care. I'm high value enough to know what he thinks about uh, and what he wants. And so that will be the thing that I promote. Um, but I'll say this to someone like Kevin or anyone else uh, who may think that I'm wrong or who still kind of wants to live that lifestyle. Could you imagine could you imagine if all the things, the true things that you're saying and all the energy and all the effort that you're putting into all of this stuff, could you imagine if God was your Lord, if Jesus was your Lord, how he could use you in that regard? I think that would be just awesome, right? So I wanted to cover that. I wanted to say that. Um, and, and, and I want to put it out there. I know I'm, I might get some, uh, what I say, I might get some smoke from some folks later, but uh, some of you know my history and my past. That doesn't bother me. Let me ask a couple of these questions. Uh, Shauna Thomas says, have you done teaching on marriage, divorce, and remarriage? If not, you should do a video. You know what, Shauna, we're going to um, cover that. Um, not sure when, as I said, we're going to talk, we're going to do something in the next week or two um, for um, singles. And I haven't decided if it's going to be singles together or just single men then single women haven't decided i will let you know so you all kind of say say i uh, posted on that uh let's see let me see what the one says he says the emptiness in your heart that can't seem to be filled by anything that's the spot for jesus christ hey man he can only fill that void um you are so so true my brother uh, let's see <clears throat> Reggie says that actually what Kevin Samuels does is give women a reality check. Uh, Reggie, he says some true things that we didn't need Kevin Samuels to say in the first place. You didn't need him to, to say some of those things. And guess what? Those women, um, their problem isn't um, not listening or not knowing the right thing to do. They're going to do right or wrong regardless of what Kevin, what Kevin says. You're not going to guilt somebody who's desperate or frustrated into doing the right thing. The answer for them, just like the answer for uh, someone else, is going to be what uh, the one said is that emptiness, that hole in your heart, because you're trying to fill it with some other man or some other woman or some money or status or what have you. And so, yeah, he gives them a little bit of reality check, but so too does Satan. Satan is going to uh, hit you with the truth and then knock you down and keep you down. And I'm not saying that's necessarily his his uh, motive. I don't know. I don't think his motive is to bring you up. I think he's found a way to make money. That's what I think. And I don't begrudge him at all. Brother Kevin, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, if that's what floats your boat. And if people are going to buy into that, uh, what is what it uh, what's ascribed to P.T. Barnum as having said, there's a sucker born every every minute. And so if that's who you want to go to to um, find out what you should do, have at it. He calls himself the Godfather. And you want to go to a guy who calls himself the Godfather? Fine. I'm going to the, to God the Father. How about that? Uh, let's see. Samuel says. Oh, are you all talking about something else? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody keeps asking this question, what Bible software do I use? I use Accordance Bible software. Uh, when we do, when we go, when we cover um, some of the Bible studies uh, in the future, I'll be going over that even more so. So, but yeah, what I use, Scott, is 
uh, Accordance Bible Software. Uh, all right, guys. So, uh, guys, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I've got to get ready for a for a study uh, that's coming up in the meantime. You guys be blessed. Y'all tell Kevin Samuels I said, hey. <laughs>